In the last video, I mentioned that we were just going to gloss over what sex equals zero or sex equals one means. Now we're actually going to talk about that. Uh, what that is, is it's called coding. So regression equations can only handle numeric data. You couldn't multiply 0 0.4 times red any direct or meaningful way. So instead you need to make a category, or you need to find a way to turn the category into numbers. Whenever you do this, it's called coding. There are different coding schemes available, and while the full dive into this is a little outside the scope of the course, I want to make sure that I cover some of the high points. First, dummy coding. Dummy coding is when you assign 1 to a treatment condition and 0 to all others. Uh, that's usually what's referred to because it's common in uh, medical research. But anything where you have an intervention that you care about and you are interested in knowing how different things are when you do something versus what they would be otherwise, where you have a kind of neutral boring at the otherwise, you can use dummy coding. So, because drug trials are a common example, I've got, let's try and predict if somebody gets cancer. I'll give the equation as 0 0.5 is our intercept, negative 0 0.1 times drug plus 0 0.02 times age. So this will be what the formula is for everyone. In order to say, let's put in these drug and placebos, we get, uh, with drug equals 1, it's 0 0.5 minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.02 times age. So that'll give us 0 0.4 plus 0 0.02 times age. Compare that to the placebo rate. In placebo, the coefficient on drug goes away completely. So that beta weight, because it's multiplied by zero from being in something other than your treatment condition, it just gets eliminated and we ignore it. So that leaves us with 0 0.5 minus zero plus the 0 0.02 times age. It's worth noting that this part of age doesn't change. That's the same in all cases. This case over here on what your intercept is, you start with an intercept that's the same, but you can, once you plug in the values for the code, come up with variants of it that have what it would be in different conditions. So everyone still has a 0 0.5 base rate, but you have a 0 0.4 rate instead if you're in the treatment condition, if you have had the drug. So that's what dummy coding is. One for the thing that you're changing, manipulating your intervention, zero for everything else. A frequently more useful coding scheme is contrast coding. Contrast coding has the conditions sum to one, or sum to zero across all of your different uh, options. So we have drug at plus 0.5, placebo at minus 0.5. This does slightly tweak what our equation is in order to get the same numbers. We now have an intercept of 0 0.45 and our weight on drug is 0 0.05. Now this still gives us 0 0.4 is the base rate for if you are taking the drug and 0 0.5 is your base rate for if you are not. Uh, because adding and subtracting the 0 0.05 brings it to the 0 0.4 and 0 0.5 respectively. But now the 0 level here means something a little bit different. The 0 here would be well, I don't know what, whether someone took the drug or not, so I'm just going to throw out that piece of information. 
So instead of making an assumption, I'm just going to try and look at an average or a typical person where that situation or where I don't know their drug status. That's useful if you're interested in group means and it can give you a good base rate and that's worth having. But it also has very cool implications for what you can do with nulls. Because you now have a way to include nulls within this regressor even though you can't multiply by a null. So you can multiply, you can sub in any nulls with zero, or in, uh, replace any nulls with zero, and then it just drops that part of the predictor out. It's an interesting and useful tool to have in your belt to be able to um, use those nulls in that way. Uh, the last type of coding that I want to talk about here is polynomial contrast coding. The big reason that you care about this is that sometimes you can use your domain expertise to make sensible subgroups. So, what is polynomial contrast coding? Polynomial contrast coding is when you have more than two groups. When you have more than two groups, you'll need a larger number of uh, splits or codes that you'll need to make in order to uniquely identify rows. Uh, specifically, you need one less than the number of categories you have. Uh, one way to think about this is if you are trying to put features out for who is the best uh, basket, college basketball team, well, they have a tournament to figure it out. It's got 64 teams that go into it. How many different games need to be played in order to figure out which one is the best? 63. One less than the number of teams you have. So when you're making up all these different groups, there are an infinite number of ways that you can do it. However, you can use domain expertise or real-world knowledge in order to make some more interesting groups. So what I've got as an example here is back to the Titanic data. I'm dividing passenger class, which is uh, first, second, and third. I am dividing it into two uh, different predictors that are going to be different features, factors, or whatever in our model. I have one that is called best and one that is called bottom. The best is a two if you're in first class and a negative one for everything else. And bottom has a zero for first class. We're ignoring everyone in first class because they're already uniquely identified. So if I know what your score is on best, I don't need anything else to know what your score, or to know that your actual class is first. For bottom, I also have one for third and negative one for second. So now I have, or I'm now able to uniquely identify any row given a combination of best and bottom. And I have grouped it in such a way that I think first is different from second and third, and then I'm also interested in how is second versus third. So let's plug this in. I ran a little uh, linear regression. What do I got? Survived is 0 0.55 plus 0 0.11 times best minus 0 0.08 times bottom. If you're in first class, our best is 2. Our bottom is 0. So 0 0.55 plus 0 0.22 is 0 0.77. Second class. Same uh, regression equation. Has a negative one for best and a negative one for bottom. That gives us a prediction of 0 0.52. Now, what exactly we can do with this information is 
we can now say being in first class helps you by 0.11 compared to everything else. And we can say, if you're not in first class, here is how much being in third hurts versus second. Or just third versus second, because no one in first class would show up in that comparison. Because our weights here are different, this is 0 0.11, this is 0 0.08, we get to see the interesting, uh, or we get to make, or we gain the insight, that's how I should put this, we gain the insight that the difference between first class and everything else is bigger than the difference between second and third, because 0.11 is bigger than 0.08. The last kind of contrast codes that I want to talk about are ordinal contrast codes. We, I bring these up because it's something that Data Robot doesn't really do as far as I'm aware. But when looking at some of its models, they run a lot of one-hot encoding and they'll run a lot of binning, but they don't have these sorts of codes in them. Now, as a quick refresher, what are ordinal data types? It's things where we know how to sort them, but we don't know how far apart each one is, or we can't perform easy math on them. So in this example, I've got, we know that the order of decks on the Titanic is A, B, C, D, but what's the difference between A and B? Could I add A together twice to get B deck? Could I subtract D from B to get B? No, there's nothing like that I can perform on here. But I can still sort it. Ordinal contrast codes are a way of saying, for your set of ordered data, what patterns does it follow? And how much does each new pattern contribute beyond what the previous ones did? So for deck, our first code is a linear code. It has the gaps between each deck are two. So negative three, negative one, one, three, there's two between each of them. It's a contrast code because it still sums to zero. Now, if there was a linear effect of deck, your beta weight or your coefficient on linear would be pretty high. Next, it looks at quadratic. So quadratic, our parabola shape, this asks the question, are uh, B and C deck similar and A and D deck similar? And is there a gap between AD and BC? So it's comparing two pairs of decks but the question is, is being in the middle harmful or helpful? I would assume in our Titanic data, this, the coefficient on our quadratic is going to be pretty small. Being in one of the mid decks of the ship is not worse than being on the bottom of the ship. Last is cubic. Uh, there isn't a terribly sane interpretation of this that I can come up with in the context of our Titanic data. So just think of it as what's needed to make the rest of the math work out. So that's what we've got for ordinal contrast codes. It's for sorting data. Or it's for data that is sorted, but doesn't have numeric weights attached to it. Um, yeah, and that's what we need for the different coding mechanisms. We have dummy coding, we have contrast coding, we have ordinal contrast codes in case those come up. Um, and we have the reason that it matters is you can use your expertise that DataRobot can't.